Don't you like it? What? Your drink? No, no, it's fine. No, I Grant. Don't... Grant, any news? Mate, they've only just kicked off. <laughs> you heard anything that much? Sanjay, they've only just kicked off. Oh, Frog's gonna phone us at the final whistle. Usual, please. Ah, uh, well remembered. <laughs> oh, I'm getting there. Come on, Nigel. Shoot. I reckon it'll be a tight game. A goal either way is going to decide it. So problem number one, they're centre forward. Oh, yeah, he's an excellent player. Really. Yeah, I've seen him always very quick. Right, so what do we do? Well, you mark him tight. Slow him down. How? Obvious. Not too obvious, though, eh? Leave it to me, Nigel. Hello, boys. Oh, hello, Mr. Debbie? Sorry. Oh, you look as if you could do with rescuing. Come with me. Nigel, he's done brilliantly getting us this far, don't you think? Yeah. Mm, if we win, the Vic will be on the map. Yeah, I suppose it will. Come on, tell me what's on your mind. Nigel been behaving himself, has he? Nigel's all right, yeah. You know, Debbie, when it comes to confession, I reckon a landlady's the next best thing to a priest. <laughs> well, I'll know where to come then, won't I? Well, just you make sure you do. Additional number run of this afternoon in the 5 o'clock race, number 17 will not run. Number 17... How come you got them as favourites, then? Well, I've had a couple more bets on them, that's all. Who from? I can't tell you that. That's privileged information. Well, it couldn't have been from round here anyway. <laughs> oh, you'd be surprised. You're not insinuating that any of my team have been betting on the opposition, are you? Did I say that? Right. I'll have a tenner on a queen pick. Nigel. Done. And as a special favour, I'll give you five to four. But on one condition. Yeah, what's that? You lend me your wife tonight. Eh? Hey? We're having a bit of a change round. Uh -huh. It's only a couple of hours, time and a half. Well, I told him you needed me at the match. Well, I thought you could do with the money to cover your losses. Go on, Debbie, you can't leave me stuck here on my own. Oh, well, you're going to stay tonight as well, Mark. Some of us need the money. So what do you think? Yeah, yeah, all right. I'll meet you over the Vic later for the victory celebrations. Yeah. Or to drown your sorrows. <laughs> <laughs> Take the bet, Debbie. Well, right, then. We've got the place all to ourselves. Uh, Maddie, how about a quick cup of tea before we start? What do you want me to do? Ooh. That's the best offer I've had all day. Look. But we're here to work, remember? So you wipe the boards, and I'll make the start on the walls. What do I do with all these? My office, um, on top of the filing cabinet. You're very quiet tonight, Debbie. Am I? Nothing bothering you, is there? No. Oh, good. I was beginning to think you didn't love me anymore. How are you doing? OK. Well, I've cleared everything out from 1994. Oh, I think like a fresh start. <laughs> Cut out all the old dead wood. Yeah, but mind you, we could have done this during the day when it was quiet. Why? You've got an aversion to earning extra money, have you? No. Anyway. From what I can gather, you didn't have anything special on tonight. Apart from the old man's football match, that is. How are things between you now? Never better. Happy at home. Happy at work, is what I say. And even now, Nigel can't be so dense not to appreciate a good thing when he's got it. Nigel is not dense. Of course not. I mean, a girl like you wouldn't be with someone who wasn't all there, would she? All right, all done. I was saying to Maddie earlier. Perhaps the three of us could go for a quick one when we finished. Sorry, I'm, I'm meeting Nigel later. Oh, well. Just a thought. Sorry. Are you ready, buddy? Oh, as I'll ever be. Night, Mr D. Good night, girls. Night. Oh, and Debbie. I want you to know you work really hard tonight. I appreciate it. Might even have a word with Ed Office. Come on, Debbie. I wish you wouldn't talk like that to him about me. Like what? Well, you know very well, whips and chairs. Oh, she loves it. Can't get enough of it. It's only a joke. No, it wasn't. Jokes are funny. I was only having a laugh. I didn't mean anything by it. You never do, do you? Look, I'm supposed to be your wife, not some bit on the side for you to make jokes to your mates about. I didn't mean it like that. All I ask is for a bit of respect. That's not too much to ask, is it? No. Good. Do you know what I fancy? <coughs> An American-style breakfast. You know... Pancakes, syrup, eggs, sunny side up. <laughs> that do, yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, Debs. 
When was the last time you saw a lion? Apart from our wedding night, I mean. Ooh, someone's happy today. Yeah, we're all happy, Mum. Oh, why's this then? Well, Claire and I were thinking we should take a trip out to Whipsnade today. Because we're on holiday, the sun's shining, birds are singing. Have a picnic. What do you say, Debs? Fancy seeing a bit of wildlife? Well, it might be a bit difficult, Nigel. Why? Well, I've got work today. Work? Oh, Mum! When was all this arranged? Well, I, d I did tell you, didn't I? No. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought I said. But it was, this was going to be our day out. Well, we'll go to the zoo another time. Look, well, maybe we could have a quick lunch together in the cafe. That's not the zoo. Yeah, well, at least you get to see feeding time. Well, look, I, I better go. I'm going to be late. I'll, I'll see you later. Right. Have a nice day. What's this? Got a hot tip? No, I am. Um... What's the matter, Nigel? I don't know. I've I, I just been thinking about things. I'm, I'm sorry, Debs, but I feel really angry about today. I mean, I know I shouldn't say anything, but... Oh, I thought I told you, Nigel. In fact, I'm sure I did. I really wanted us to have a family day out. We'll do it another time. I've great plans for today, that's all. I've got plans and all, Nigel. I get time and a half for today, and most of that's going to go towards Claire's computer. I'm not working here just for the fun of it. Yeah, I know that. Anyway, I don't like zoos much. And Claire does. She's gone around to Jackson to see if Sonny will come along with us. The more the merrier. Are you sure you can't take the day off? Right. See you later, then. <laughs> I've uh, got a bit of a problem, Debbie. Yeah? What are you doing tomorrow night? I'm trying to make it up to Nigel, I should imagine. Why? I might need you to work late again. <sighs> nah, sorry. It's more than my life's worth. What about Maddie? <laughs> Maddie's already working. We've got some more paperwork to catch up on. Go on. I'll give you the day off on Saturday. Well, Maddie's coming in. <laughs> You're a star, Debbie. <sighs> ah! Ah! <laughs> Oh, it should have been there, Debs. It was great, wasn't it? The kings of the jungle. Well, kings of Whipsnade, anyway, wasn't it? <laughs> Looks like you enjoyed yourselves. Yeah, it was great, wasn't it, Claire? Yeah, apart from the one that was sick. Yeah, I reckon he must have eaten one of the visitors he didn't agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to know someone had a good time. Sounds better than slaving away all day. We did think about you. Claire thought we should get you a souvenir. Thanks, Claire. But I had a better idea. Sounds interesting. I was a bit wrong to you this morning. Maybe I deserved it. Anyway, uh... I'd look to see what's on in the cinema, and guess what? What? They're re-showing The Lion King. It's only on tomorrow, so I booked us three seats. I know it's not the real thing, but uh, at least you don't get a smell. I'm afraid I'm going to have to give it a miss. Why? Oh, don't tell me. Duggan wants you to work late again. Well, he said he'd give me Saturday off. I need to go to the toilet. Sorry, Nigel. I might as well give up work and become a full-time nanny. What are you on well, about? That's all I'm good for around here, isn't it? I mean, you've got your career and I'm looking after Claire. Nudge, it's only till I've got enough money to get that computer. Nudge! Hiya. All right. Oh, you sound awful. Yeah, still got it. I think it's the flu. But you are still working tonight. Oh, yeah. Try and stop me. Hello, Debbie. You still okay for this evening? Yeah, yeah, everything's fine. Terrific. What would I do without you girls? Yeah, I'll tell you what. I'll open a bottle of scotch for when we shut up shop. That'll warm your cockles, eh, Maddie? Sounds lovely, Mr. Duggan. <laughs> there you go. <coughs> Do you want me to go back and get you something? <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, Debs. I don't know if I'm going to make it till ten. Oh, of course you will. You'll be fine. I'm just going over the bank. Do you want to give me what you've got? Yeah, uh, there's some um, 300 there. Cheers. Won't be long. Be all right, just think of the money. Yeah, I'm trying to. <laughs> well, it should be pretty easy tonight. Money for nothing, I reckon. Time and a half as well after eight o'clock. <coughs> Look, uh, lemon and honey, that's what you need. So, uh, I'll go get you some, make you a nice hot drink. Oh, thanks, Dibs. <coughs> <coughs> Listen to you. You'll drive the papers away. Here we are. Hundred quid on Pilbara's lad. Hundred. Correct. This should pay for my holidays this year. Are you sure you're up to it? I mean, you don't have to make a martyr of yourself, you know. I do feel pretty lousy. Go on. You get yourself off home. We'll manage you. Oh, thanks, Mr. Tucker. <laughs> and straight to bed with your mind. <laughs>
Are you not off, are you, Maddie? I'm afraid so. Well, I'll have the chemist get you some paracetamol. Nah. Listen to her. She can't work in that state. Oh, it works wonders. Oh, I'm sorry, Dibs, but I feel like death warmed up. Are you sure? Excuse me, love. I'm trying to put a bed on. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, looks like it's just you and me then tonight, Debbie. And how's Blossom? Well, very well. As a matter of fact, I'm going up the road to meet her now. Oh, that's nice. Drinks will be on you then. Ah, <laughs> chicken feet. Now, nah, I'll see you later. Oh, wait a minute. Debbie, do you realise that the payout on this could be a thousand quid? What? Pilbara's lad? Yeah, a hundred quid at ten to one. Why didn't you tell me about it? I'm, I'm really sorry, Mr Duggan. Well, how could you miss it a bit of that size? I could have edged it out with someone. Well, I don't know how it happened. Is it too late? Well, of course it is. They'll be off in a minute. Better pray it doesn't come in. Problems? Oh, I hope not. I just don't know how it happened. Listen, I better be going. Blossom doesn't like to be kept waiting. See you. Yeah. Cheerio. Mr Duggan. One did it. I'm really, really sorry. I don't know how I can have been so stupid. I, I can't have been concentrating. I should have picked well. it up. Slap risk for you, then. A thousand pounds, I should have told you. We all make mistakes. I mean, you've had a lot on your mind lately. Problems at home and all that. What do you mean? But don't get me wrong. Nigel's a nice bloke, but he does give you a bit of an hard time, doesn't he? No, he doesn't. Put it down to experience. Just be careful. I can't afford too many mistakes like that. Thanks, Mr Duggan. It won't happen again, I promise. Go on. <laughs> Any more like that and I'll have a word with him myself. Right. I've finished those receipts, so I'll get off now. Yeah. Not a bad night. <sighs> Despite your little oversight. Here. Can you put that away for me? Yeah. Oh. I still don't know what happened there. I must have been miles away. Yeah, well, let's just forgive and forget, shall we? What are you doing? All right, all right, I'm sorry. Get off me. OK, my mistake. I thought that's what you wanted. What? Oh, get a grip, will you? How can you say that? Oh, come on, Debbie, you've been giving me the come on for weeks. But, but I'm married. What about Nigel? You haven't stopped going on about how he's been getting on your nerves. No, I haven't. Well, that's what it sounded like the Look, I mentioned him once, that's all. OK, I got the wrong message. But you can't blame me for thinking what I did the way you've been given out. You're not normally such a shrinking violet. If you weren't up for it, why the hell didn't you say so? This is a betting shop, not a convent. You ought to be able to handle a bit of attention. If you can't, maybe you should think about working somewhere else. Oh, I think I'd better go. Is she? Yeah, yeah, ages ago. Have a nice evening together? Yeah, we're getting used to it. Nigel. Your dinner's in the oven. It's probably burnt by now, though.